When I was first introduced to the dot product, it was presented to me as this random formula, or these random two formulae rather. Uh, the connection between them wasn't shown whatsoever, and these just randomly both gave the same answer and also yielded some useful results with, to do with perpendicular vectors and stuff. It was all quite confusing. Um, but So I did a lot of research and I figured out kind of some intuition behind why it works and why these two are the same. So that's what I'm going to show in this video uh, because it really bugged me for a while, but then I finally figured it out. So in order to do that, first thing we're going to do is we have to look at this formula. So this formula will kind of give us the intuition. And then after that, I'm going to prove that this formula is the same as the formula with the cos in it. So yeah. I guess first to kind of define a few things, uh, this is kind of the little diagram we're working with. Uh, theta is the angle between the two vectors, and theta is always between 0 and 180, because you can see if it's 180 is the biggest it can be, and then if we go past 180, you can see we just have another smaller angle than 180 here. So there's no point at which we need an angle bigger than 180, because then we can just use the angle on the other side. Uh, but we'll start off with an acute angle uh, just to see what's happening. And then here's the graph of y equals cos theta for angles between 0 and 180 degrees. So the way that the way that I uh, found to kind of think about this is to think about it's the dot product kind of tells you how much two vectors help each other. So imagine you're trying to push a car and you're the blue guy. So you're trying to push the car to the right. So the kind of path that you're trying to follow is to push it this way. And then the red vector is your friend. So there's a kind of a couple of different setups we can have here and then you'll see why it's cos of the angle and not like sine or tan or something and so yeah so the first case is if you're both pushing in the exact same direction in which case this red vector comes down to here and you can see there's no the angle between the two vectors is zero uh in which case your friend your red got buddy is pushing completely to the right so you're both pushing in the same direction the car is moving fast and it's all good um as for the dot product, when you put in an angle of zero degrees, you get the maximum of the cosine function. So the cosine function peaks at one and is the smallest at minus one. And when the angle is zero, you can see that we're at the very top, we're at one. So this is the highest it can be when the two vectors are perpendicular, or sorry, parallel, when the angles are, the angle between them is zero. Now, if we were to increase that to be an acute angle, we can say maybe around here. Uh, then it starts to change a little bit. So now your friend's kind of pushing in this direction. He's kind of, maybe not that, a little steeper, like this. So what's happening now? He's still kind of helping you. You can see if we resolve this vector, you can see that he's still pushing a little bit towards the right, but he's not using all of his energy to push towards the right. So he is still helping you to an extent, which is why the dot product will still be positive, as you'll see in a second. But it's going to be a little bit smaller because he's not pushing as hard as he could be or in the right direction, he could be using his energy more efficiently by pushing straight to the right. So we could say this is about maybe 45 degrees or 40 degrees. It could, it's about here. And if we look on the cosine graph, you can see that about here, it's less than one. So it's still positive but because he's still helping you, but it's smaller than one. It's not as big as it would have been. And as the ang that angle gets bigger and approaches 90, the cosine of that angle gets smaller and smaller as he helps you less and less. Now, if that angle is equal to 90 and they're perpendicular to each other, so this is a perpendicular now. So the angle is 90 degrees, and I'll just get rid of this. So now he's pushing straight upwards. And what does this mean for you? Well, now he's not really helping you at all because he's not necessarily pushing against you. He's just not helping whatsoever. If you can think about it in real life, if you're pushing a car and somebody's pushing in this direction, it's not actually going to hinder your ability to push the car because he's not pushing against you, but he's also not helping whatsoever. And for this reason, if you go to cos of 90 degrees, you can see that it's equal to zero. And since zero, so this will be equal to zero, so the whole dot product will be equal to zero, which is basically telling you uh, he's not helping you whatsoever anymore. He's just, he's not making it harder, but he's also not helping you. So that's why the dot product is zero, because the amount of help you're getting is zero. However, if we make this angle even bigger and make it an obtuse angle, you can see that it actually gets even worse. So now this angle theta is greater than 90 degrees, and now your friend is kind of pushing like this. And now you can see if we resolve it, there is a component of this pushing towards the left. That means he's now making your life a little bit harder. He's starting to push to the left a bit now. And if we go onto our uh, diagram here, uh, this is about 45 degrees. If we go to 45 degrees here and we check on the cosine graph, we can see that it's just under... It's not just under, I haven't drawn it properly, but you can see it's a negative number now, but it's not as bad as it could be, you know? It always could be worse. Your friend's being pretty annoying, but he could be more annoying. So it's 
negative number but it's not the worst it could be as you can see he is using quite a bit of his effort to push against you but he's not using all of his effort to push against you so you're going to get a negative number now to show that the help you're getting is negative or in other words he's making it harder for you but it could be worse and for it to be at its worst the two vectors have to be completely facing the wrong direction uh as in well they're facing opposite directions and the angle between them is 180 degrees what happens now let me just get rid of this red uh now he's on the other side of the car and he's pushing towards the left. If I could draw it, thank you. So now he's pushing completely against you. So that he's being as unhelpful as he possibly could be. What an annoying guy, am I right? And if we have a look here at 180 degrees, or the angle between these two vectors, you can see that the cosine is equal to minus one. And that's the minimum of the cosine function. It can't get any worse than this. This is the possibly the worst it could possibly be. So yeah, basically, the dot product is telling you how much these two vectors are helping each other. And you can kind of think of it the other way around. Because the dot product is commutative, you can think of it the other way. So if you think about it from red's perspective, red is being completely acted against by uh, blue here. You can see if we go look at the other examples quickly, if it's like this, um, blue isn't completely acting against red. Because uh, if we resolve blue's vector in the direction of red's, you can see part of it's going against red, this part here. Uh, but not all of it's going against red. So it would still be negative. Uh, if it's perpendicular, um, there's still neither of them are helping each other. And you can see that it kind of checks out in both ways. And that's further proof, in case the formula wasn't proof enough, um, that the dot product is indeed commutative. You can do it either way around. And you might be thinking, well, I haven't talked about these magnitudes yet, but the magnitudes are basically just telling you how much help you're getting. Because if, think about it, if this red vector is really long like if it's here let's say if you have a small red vector here uh, the amount of help you're getting is the same as if you had a really big red vector here so you could say that the kind of the amount of help that you're getting here is equal regardless if it's a small one in the same direction or a bigger one in not as much of a direction because then in this scenario this the cost is the highest it can be but the vector is a little bit smaller. And in this scenario, the cost is a little bit lower because of the angle. It maybe might be about here, but the uh, vector B, the length of it is a bit longer. So you can see it's kind of the same amount of help either way. And let's do a few numerical examples to see what that means or kind of get a better idea of that. So here we have two scenarios. In the first scenario, well, in both scenarios, you're pushing the car with a force of 10 Newtons to the right. Uh, in the first scenario, your friend is pushing with you at, with a force of 5 newtons to the right. And in the second scenario, your friend is pushing at an angle with 10 newtons. So he's pushing more strongly here, uh, but he's not pushing in the same direction as you. And to be specific, the angle between you, you two, both of you, uh, is 60 degrees, as shown here. So uh, this is a horizontal line, this is a horizontal line. So they're both the same angle. It's 60 degrees. So let's calculate the dot product. Let's see how much they're actually helping each other. So let's look at the red scenario first. So uh, the magnitude of vector A, which we're going to say is us, is 10. I'll actually color code these. So we have 10. Well, the magnitude is 10. I don't need to write the uh, absolute value around it. Multiplied by 5. And then multiplied by cos. And then the angle between them is 0. They're both uh, facing the same direction. So cos of 0 is 1, as we've established. So the overall force that we're pushing on the car is 50 newtons. Now, if we look at the pink scenario, you're still pushing with a force of 10. But now, your friend is pushing with a force of 10 as well. However, he's pushing at an angle of 60 degrees. Now, if you put that into your calculator, what you get is 100, and then cost of 60 is 0 0.5. So it's 100 times 0 0.5, which is equal to 50 newtons. So you can see the overall amount of help you're getting is actually the same. And we can quantify that uh, because he's pushing harder here but he's not pushing in the same direction as you fully. Here he's not pushing as hard, but he is pushing in the same direction more. Now let's say, for example, what if this red arrow was facing the other way? So let's take this red arrow. What if it was facing, what if it was on the other side of the car and it was facing like this and there's five newtons this way? Well, let's have a look at the red scenario now. So now the angle between these two vectors, if you think about putting their tails at each other again, is 180 degrees, which means they're not helping each other at all. So let's say, um, we're going to have the magnitude of vector A, which is 10 newtons from us, multiplied by vector B, which is 5 newtons, and then the angle between them is 180. 
and cost of 180 now is minus one, so it gets minus 50 newtons. So the amount of help that, you're, and it's technically not in newtons because it's not a, a vector technically, uh, it just gives you a scalar, so it doesn't really have a unit technically. But you can see that the amount of help we're getting here is negative. This guy, he's not helping us whatsoever. Um, he's actually making it quite difficult for us. However, what if he was pushing at an angle again? So let's say he's pushing here. So this is our second pink scenario. He's pushing in this direction. Let's make it a different angle though. Let's say we'll go for 30 degrees just because it's um, easy. So now you can see if we place this on top of um, our blue vector, if I could copy it. Well, it would look something like this. So if we have our 30 degrees down here, that means we have 60 degrees up here and then plus the 90 degrees. So that'll be 60 plus the 90. That gives us 150 degrees in total. So now the angle between the two vectors is 150 degrees. And we're going to still say he's pushing with 10. Let's have a look at the second pink scenario now. So he's pushing with a force of 10. Uh, pink guy is pushing with a force of 10 as well. But we're going to have cos 150 multiplied as well. Uh, because the angle between those two vectors is 150. Let's see how much help he's getting by putting that into our calculators. And what we actually end up getting is roughly minus 86.6. So you can see this scenario is actually worse. You're actually getting even less help here than up here, even though the angle is not, is even though he's not pushing in the same direction, but because he has a stronger force, we have a smaller dot product, which means he's getting even less help. Let's have another example. I'm kind of running out of colors, but we'll go for green. What if he was pushing this way? So now we're going to look at, uh, show that it doesn't matter what angle it is. Let's say he's only pushing with the force of two newtons, and let's say this angle here is like 10 degrees or something. Uh, so now if we have a look at the angle between our vectors, like, or sorry, I shouldn't draw on the 10 degrees there. I should have drawn the 10 degrees, um, or I won't say 10 degrees. Let's just say when the vectors are on top of each other, these make an angle of 100 degrees in total, okay? So let's do that. So let's say that the angle between the two vectors is 100 degrees, and this is only two newtons now. What's going to happen? Let's have a look at green. So remember, our blue is still 10. Our green is going to be 2. And then our, we're going to have cos of 100, which is the angle between the two vectors, or this angle under 180 anyway. Put that into your calculator, and the answer that you get is minus 3.47 so you can see that the amount of help we're getting yeah it's negative so it's not helping us but it's not as big as it was up here uh, the reason for that is because the angle we're pushing at isn't as steep um, so I guess to draw it to scale properly the direction that I actually had it was kind of more like this uh, such that as you can see that's about 100 degrees roughly uh, 2 newtons so you can see that first of all it's a small force and second of all it's not really against him it's kind of more facing downwards uh, so you can see you'd expect a smaller dot product but it's still negative because it's still going against him a little bit and if you want you can experiment with this you can try some other things um, for example when it's perpendicular although it's not very interesting uh, it doesn't matter because the cost of the angle is 90 and then cost of 90 is zero so I was gonna show where this formula comes from but I think this video has gotten a bit too long so I'll do that in another video a follow-up to this but I hope that made sense and please leave questions or suggestions in the comments and like if you enjoyed it and found it helpful.